Hello, <clears throat> today we're going to start with sequences and sequences is really nothing else than a list of numbers. For instance, we have the sequence 1, 3, 5, 7. So these, this is the list of numbers and we can go on in this pattern. Now we are going to call the first number the term 1. Okay, it's standing on the first position. So importantly, we have number one standing at the first position. Number three standing at the second position. Number five standing at the third position. Number seven standing at the fourth position position. So now already learn this term or the, this terminology. The position is called N. Okay. So it is if you are in a race. The person that came first, okay, the number one is first. The person that came second, that is in this case number three, came second right in this case the person number five came third and the person person number seven came fourth right so the position in the race um, is in but the people that are running they carrying the number one three five and seven they are called the terms okay so in the list of numbers you have a position which we refer to as in and then the numbers themselves, they are referred to as terms. Alright, so sequences very, very often form patterns. So if we want to have a look at this, for instance, we've got one row with three crosses. The next diagram shows us two rows, each having four crosses. The next diagram shows us three rows with having five crosses. So if you look at that, every time we have one cross more and one row more. So when they now ask you to complete diagram four, then we're going to have one, two, three, four rows. Okay. And here we've got two, four, five crosses. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six crosses. And if we complete this, then we will actually get the total number of crosses for diagram four. Okay. So now they ask you how many crosses will there be in diagram five? which now can be done in the same way. Here we've got four rows. So in this case, we must have one, two, three, four, five rows. Okay, five rows. And we did, we have two, four, six crosses. So we must have two, four, six, seven crosses across. All right, but people drawing these crosses is going to make it a very long way. And what they can also ask us is, for instance, how many crosses will there be in the 20th diagram? So how will we do that? We will have to actually draw 20 diagrams, which is going to be a problem, isn't it? So let's look at this and follow this logically. In diagram 1, we've got one row. In diagram 2, we've got two rows. In diagram 3, we've got three rows. In diagram 4, we've got four rows. In diagram 5, we've got five rows. Now, previously, I told you that the position is what we call in. So diagram one has one row, diagram two has two rows. So the number of rows indicates to us the, posi the position. So that is in. 
Okay, now when we go and look further and we look at the number of crosses. So in diagram 1, we've got three crosses. Here, we've got four crosses. Here, we've got five crosses. Here, we've got six crosses. Here, we've got seven crosses. Okay, so this indicates to us how many crosses in each row. Now, if you compare the one to the three, and the two to the four, and the three to the five, and the four to the six, you should now recognize that it is every time an addition of two, an addition of two, an addition of two, and let's check here, five plus two is seven. So this is correct. Meaning I can express the crosses in each row as n, the number of rows, plus two. Okay, n plus two. So if I take n, which is two, and I add two, then I get four crosses, right? And here again, I take three rows. In each row, I have three plus two, five crosses, right? Here, I've got four rows. In each row, I've got four plus two, which is six crosses. Okay, and now if we go and look and look the, at the total number of crosses, we have got the total is, sorry, the total is three. Okay, here the total is four plus four, which is eight, right? And here we've got five plus five plus five, which is 15, right? Here we've got 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. Now it's already getting a bit more complicated. Maybe you have realized in the meantime that I can actually multiply the rows by the number of crosses. 4 times 6, which is 24. And here I can multiply 5 rows by 7 crosses, which is 35. So what we have done, people, we have multiplied the number of rows by the number of crosses to get the total number of crosses. So the total number of crosses can be expressed as n multiplied by n plus 2. Okay, and now we express the pattern in the general format okay so now we can work out the number of crosses in any diagram so how many crosses will there be in the nth diagram this n people stands for any diagram and we have already worked that out we have worked out that i must take the number of rows okay the number of rows times the number of crosses Okay. And we found that the number of rows is n and the number of crosses is n plus 2. So n plus 2, which gives me the general format of the pattern. Okay, now if they now ask me to actually find the 20th diagram, or the number of crosses in the 20th diagram, then this is really easy. I'm going to use my pattern expression, okay, and my 20th diagram, people, is the position, isn't it? So this will be, n will be 20. So instead of n, I will write 20. Instead of n, I will write 20 plus 2, and then I have 20 plus 2, which is 22, times 20. That gives me the number of 440 crosses. Right, 
Now, this sounds very complicated. Fortunately, there is an easy way for us to work out the nth, um, nth number of crosses or whatever the pattern in this case may be. I will then teach you this in the next following um, videos where I teach you how to easily find the nth diagram. Okay, I want to just show you something further. If we just given the num uh, number list, which again is called a sequence, and they now say to us, find the next two numbers in the row, in the sequence. Then you must just have a look from two to four. How do I get to that? I need to add, I need to add two. Okay, how do I get from four to six? I need to add two. How do I get from six to eight? I need to add two. So now to find the next um, number, I will add 2 to 8, which gives me 10, okay? And I will add another 2 to 10, which gives me 12. So in this case, the pattern is add 2, right? This is the pattern. If we look at the next one, how do we get from 8 to 5? We need to subtract 3. Now from 5 to 2, I subtract 3. From 2, I subtract 3. 3 and then I get negative 1. Now let me subtract another 3. Then I get to negative 4. And let me subtract another 3. Then I get to negative 7. So what is this pattern? This pattern is subtract 3. Right. So we have an addition and we have a subtraction. These two we call arithmetic progressions. If we look at the next example, how do we get from 1 to 3, from 3 to 9, from 9 to 27? I need to multiply by 3. I need to multiply by 3. I need to multiply by 3. So if I multiply 27 by 3, my next number is 81. And if I multiply 81 by 3, my next number is 108. But what is my pattern here? My pattern is multiply by 3. That is my pattern here. And in the last example, how do we get from 100 to 50? From 50 to 25, I need to divide by 2 and divide by 2 and divide by 2. And if I divide 12.5 by 2, then I get 6.25. And if I divide that one by 2 again, I will get 3.125. So what is the pattern here? The pattern here is divided by 2. Okay. And this, where we have multiplication and division, we call a geometric progression. So we have two different types of sequences. The one where the pattern is an addition or a subtraction and the other one where the pa pattern is a multiplication or a division. And remember divided by two is also the same as multiplying by one half. Okay, so if you have a multiplication by a whole number or a multiplication by a fraction, which really comes down to a division, then we call that a geometric progression. But more on this and specifically what the difference is and how you will actually find the nth pattern, okay, is in the following videos.